Well, we'll decide later. Now let's play a little bit with this library, which is called mbclast. That is going to perform tons of methods at the same time, so we can have a, a better idea of what's going on there. Okay. So the main function is called mbclast, and you have tons of decisions to take here. So you have to define the distance, the, the type of metric, the minimum number of clusters you want to explore. Okay, so, so it's not straightforward to use, but I'm going to give you a couple of parameters so you can play by yourself. So here we have to introduce the data set. Index equals all mean that I'm going to try the 30 indices that you have in, in incorporated into this function. So this is going to take longer, but of course you're going to have a, a better picture of what's going on there. And the method complete. This is related to something that we'll see in other videos. This is related to hierarchical clustering. And let's explore, let's say, from 2 to 10, so this runs faster. Okay, let's uh, store this into a new variable. Let's call this mbfit. And, okay, grab a coffee. Okay, that was fast because the data set is small. And here you have something like that. So it's explaining a little bit what is going on there. And then this is a kind of summary of all the tried indices. You, you have the votes there. So in conclusion, the majority rule is that the best number of clusters is number two. Again, you have this lovely function inside the facto extra library, mb cluster, mb fit, and you can see a kind of histogram of what's going on there. So you can see the two the, the, the two options that the elbow method and the silhouette method uh, provided. So this is two that was the the outcome of the silhouette method. And number four is the, sorry, of the k-means method. And number four is the, the outcome of the silhouette method. So you see that when you try the 30 methods, number two is the best one. Of course, this is not something that you can use without thinking. So I would say that anything between two and four is going to work well. Probably two and four. And you can see that three is not a, a good choice there. Okay, so now we have a good value for that. Let's just, let's try always the, the lowest one because, uh, as you can see, one of the things that we try to do in machine learning is try to provide good explanations, simple explanations, okay? So in terms of interpretability, the lower the cluster, the better the interpretability. So now let's repeat the analysis again. So let's go here. Actually, we have already done this case. Of course, if you are smart enough, you can store all the outcomes of these experiments here in a, in a list or something, but okay, this is just for the sake of illustration. So let's run this again. Now this is our cluster. And now what? Okay, you can do uh, some interesting things. For instance, you can take your data frame and you can add a, a new column, which is called, let's say, cluster. I'm going to, going to plug inside a factor that is going to be in which cluster you are. So KM cluster, okay? So now our data frame has a new column and this column is uh, the, the cluster in which you are assigned to, okay? So you can do different visualizations with that. I'm going to show you a couple of them, which are Arnold Super simple, but you can copy and paste from the code in, in the description. So one is related to the function ggpers, which is in the library gggali. And here I'm going to use uh, data frame. I have to specify the color of the representation. So I'm going to make an aesthetic layer, and the color is going to be precisely cluster. And now I'm going to say, okay, if I run this, you can see already that this is pretty cool because we have a histogram there. Well, it's a, a smoothed histogram that we will see in another video. And you have different colors for different clusters. So you have a good idea. There is some something wrong here and that's related to my installation of R. So there's something with the fonts. So let me fix that. I'm going to use upper, which is going to modify the, the representation in, in this part of the graph. And then I'm going to use at least forget about that. So I'm just fixing the code. Continuous. And I'm going to say that I still want a correlation, but the font that I want to use is sans. Okay, let's run this again. Oh, sorry, something went wrong. Yeah, it was a spelling thing, continues. And here we go. So now we have these correlations, and you can see the, the total correlation between variables. For, for instance, mur murder and assault, you can see that they are highly correlated, so the larger the number of murders, in one state is going to be the larger number of assaults or the number of rapes. So you can see that all these variables are correlated. But you still can have this information by groups. And this is, this is great because now we have two groups. And you can see that only by a simple inspection, we can try to find 
an interpretation of the data. So you can see that the red ones, the cluster number one, is related to low values of murder, low values of assault, and low values of rape. But it's unrelated to the, the ur urban population, so the number of people living in cities. So crime is not a matter of living in a city or not, alone, so this is slightly larger, but this is not relevant. But there are some states which are, have larger crime rates than other states, and, and, and this is great. So this is simple interpretation of these two clusters. The second way in which you can visualize your results, and, and this is going to be related to the next part of the course, rel course related to p principal component analysis, is again inside this library Factor Extra, and it's called FV's cluster. And now here we just have to provide uh, the outcome of our cluster and algorithm. Okay, so. Our data is going to be our data frame. I'm going to remove column number five because I created this just for visualization. So I don't want uh, the, this function to be confused by my variable. Okay, now if you run that, uh, I will explain in another video what is this dimension one and dimension two, but this is related to how to reorganize all the variables into a lower dimensional variable. And we see something when we, when we watch uh, this part of principal component regression, but forget about that. And now you can see here that we have two clusters. Cluster number one, remember that it's a low crime. Cluster number two is high crime. So in the end, you have this beautiful representation and you can identify different states and play around with the data. What if we repeat this analysis, but instead of playing with that, we play with five, uh, sorry, four clusters, what was the other solution? And we repeat the, the plotting again. So I'm going to store a new column, which is the color. Uh, let's do ggplotting. Sorry, okay. Oh, sorry, here. Here we go. And now we will have four colors, as you can see. And you can see that the, the, the explanation is not so clear. So now we have these boxes, these categories, these factors, which are mixing up the data. But you can still try to find some representation. So you can see that the two cluster number two and number three are represented by high, high murder, high assault, and probably high rape. And cluster number one is uh, kind of uncorrelated with the other, but cluster one and three could be or urban populations and cluster number two and number four related to or low urban populations. So in the end, you have uh, a messier description, but you could say that clusters two and four uh, or two and three represent higher crime. Clusters one and three represent urban populations. And you have a kind of mixture between the states. Of course, you are... Try to be so precise in your description of the data that probably the interpretation is not that easy. And again, this is one of the messages of this, of this video, that when, when you have this automatic sort of plotting, don't get just the maximum. So take a look at the data, compare different possibilities, and make your own decisions.